Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. They get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you and offer you a cash sum on the table today. Another five? This is just for cheat, Chris. <laughs> I'm giving you this other five. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say to you, reject that offer. Take a gamble. Put it into a local auction and hope to get a little bit more money there. Today, the show comes to you from Leighton Buzzard in Bedfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They brought along their treasures. They want to do business. They want the real deal. So the doors are open and the deals are well underway. Corrie's Isn't saying bonjour right, to a hello. sweet little item. This is amazing. It's a Galet scent bottle. Yes. That much I know, but you're going to tell me how you came by it and what it's doing here. Well, uh, we were living in France in the late 1990s and I went to a local auction house and this particular Galet uh, atomizer was for sale and I bought it for my wife. The only problem is she does not like the colour. Well, funny enough, the colour is what I find very attractive. Now, can you tell me anything about Galet, the maker? Well, he was uh, French, obviously, working at the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, famous for his glass. Well, looking carefully, when you run your finger over it, there's two mm. layers of glass. So you've got this outer one that seems ah, yes. to be cut in to this lovely orange background. Yes. So you've got a very rich aubergine, purpley, red colour, and then orange. And mm. This signature is in the glass. It's as if he's carved his name through one layer to the lower layer of glass. And it's an atomizer, which mm. means that when you press this, a out scent came... should come. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is just a little bit frail. Well, it's been around for over 100 years, so. So you reckon the date's about. 1900, I would, Im yeah. I would imagine. Um, I'm going to try hard to buy this today. Okay. So let's put some money on the table. Mm hmm. 50, 100, mm. 150, mm. 200. That's a very definite. Definitely a no. 250. Still a no. 270. We've changed colour. Wrong decision. <laughs> 290. No. 310. 330. Still a bit further to go. I'm going to put 10 down. You've got 340 pounds. You're not mm. nodding, though, are you? No, I'm not no, nodding. No, shaking his head. Here's I, think, I think I need some expert advice. Oh, la, la. <laughs> Our independent valuers are saying three to 500. I think you're still going to be looking in today's market, certainly up towards the, the top end. So, I'm going to say to you, it's an ideal auction lot, unless mm. Corey decides to hold her breath and punt. <laughs> Magnifique. <laughs> I'm going to put all my cards on the table. Yes. Put another 50 down. Now, you've got 390 there. It's a good offer, but 10 pounds more, and we can shake hands. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> you want it. You're right, I want it. Yeah, it shows, doesn't it? OK, let's put pounds. the last 10 pounds on the table and we have a deal. We have a deal. 10 pounds on the table, we have a deal. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much indeed. <laughs> wasn't letting that slip through her fingers. Over at Tim's table, Andrea's hoping to swap her paper turner for folding money. Now, you've brought two pieces of ivory in today. Right. Yeah. Whereabouts did you acquire them from? Right, well, um, they were actually acquired by my father. Um, we used, I used to live in Bournemouth. And uh, during the 1960s and 70s, um, some of the large houses were closed down yeah. and contents were sold off. So you could go to these auctions where 
there were just boxes and you bid for a box but you didn't know what was inside and these were in one of the boxes together with some other few bits and pieces oh. um, and the most I think he paid seven pounds for a box so, really yes do you know what they're used for well I think this is just an ordinary paper it opener. is a paper opener or a letter uh, opener that's right and I think this is a paper uh, a newspaper to flip it's in it's a page pages. turner yeah. yes so in Victorian times, the newspapers were big, so yes. it's, it's to go like that to turn the pages. Yes. This is ivory. Yes. And uh, you can always tell ivory because it's, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little very faint crisscrossing in it. Oh, so right. almost like little crosses all the way across it and, mm -hmm. and that. And that is ivory as well. And this has got a silver top here, mm -hmm. which is probably. 1900, 1910 in there. It's quite Art Nouveau, isn't it? Quite yes. swirly. Yes. And it's got a mark there, which is 800. Oh, Very I couldn't thin find one. there. Oh, right, yes. 800, which means that it's, it's continental, it's not English. But it, it's absolutely no detriment to it at all. Have you got any idea of value? Um, no, not really. Let's see. Pounds, Andrea. No. No. No, I have to go a bit higher. Could you not go a bit higher? What about sixty pounds? Uh, seventy pounds. No, I said I think. I don't think I'll get a lot more of that. So, have we got a deal there then, Andrea? I think so, yes. Yes, Brilliant. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our Henry's a well-groomed chap. Surely he'll want to get his hands on Rita's vanity box. David and auctioneer William Rouse look keen too. What's the history of it? Um, in the late 60s, my aunt worked as a head housekeeper for Medmore Towers, which is just up the road. Right. And every now and then, they'd have a clear out of bits and pieces they didn't need. And she'd say, oh, my niece would like that, or my nephew, and that's how I acquired it. Oh, it's wonderful. What a wonderful thing to be given. Of course, Medmore Beautiful. House is Rothschild. It is, yeah. Yeah, and Rothschild, as I remember, they were the founders of the famous Tring Museum. Yes. I mean, it's a beautiful quality piece. It's nice that we've got pretty much all of the fittings here. Um, I think the yeah, the comb's missing, which is a real shame. Yeah, I never had that. Um, but what we've got here looks to me to be silver gilt. Okay, the silver mark is assayed to London and dates to 1905. Oh. I mean, it's just absolutely exquisite. And what I love about this is the fact that the gilding is all intact. It's almost like it's never been used. Well, I've never touched it. So, William, where are you going to place your estimation on this? Well, I think it's probably sort of, if you take all the separate pieces and add it all together, you're looking at sort of 180, 250, something like that. That's my idea. Independent value, as they're saying, two to 300. And I think I'm going along with that. But what's our dealer going to say? Let's see what he puts on the table. So, let's think. What am I going to give you? OK, I'm going to offer you... 20, 40, 60, 80, you're looking nervous, 100, 120 pounds. How does that seem? Oh, here comes the maestro. Hello, oh, David. So, 120 pounds is on the table? Yes. Our independent value as an auction is, they're all within the region of two to 300. And I think I agree with them. This one's an exceptional one. It really is magnifique. And so I'm going to say okay. it's worth more money. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Um, <laughs> right, how much more is it's the silly. question? So, 140, 160, 180. How does 180 seem? Close. Get it there. Okay. Well, how about if I tempt you 
with one of these, 190. No. No. If I take that one out, and I'm going to pop that one in, and I think 200 is going to be where I want to be with it. 200 quid on the table now, a bit more tempting, William. What do you think? Well, I think it's a very, very fair offer. There's no doubting that. I need to get in there and tell our seller, do you want to gamble or do you want to be tempted with the cash? How do you feel about that? Now, just before you make a decision, let's just try and assess what we've got here. Do you want to gamble? Do you want to take a chance? Do you have nothing to lose? I think the 200 is a fair offer from our dealer, but I think it's a bit on the low side. I think it's worth a little bit more than that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Rita. OK. I'm going to put that one back in, and then I think that's going to be me finished. 210. How do you feel about that? Change the 10 to a 20, and it's a yes. To be honest with you, Rita, I don't think I'd want to. But as David says, if you want to gamble... Yeah, I'll do the auction. OK. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Rita. Thank Pleasure you to meet your, you. Uh, Thank you. Your input on it. Pleasure. Rita really had to think about that one. Will her gamble pay off? Let's find out right now. Uh, you sat down with Henry Nichols, a very good dealer. He offered you £210. It's coming up now with a £200 reserve. Let's see if it sells this here. The uh, ladies' vanity case, lot 225. Where we go, what's it worth? Start me £100 for it. For the silver, I'm bid 100 every, everywhere. 110, I'll take. 110. Where has he gone? 120. 130. 140. 150. 150 it is. It's slow. I'm not sure they realise this is from Metmore Towers. 150. Anybody else want to come in? 160, 170, 180, 190 is my last. 200, 200 pounds in the room. It's at 200 on the reserve. I still think it's worth more money. 200 pounds on the money. Anybody else? 200 pounds, then it goes. 200. 200 pounds. So, how do you feel about this? A bit disappointed. Well, I have to tell you, Rita, mm. I also am a bit disappointed. You're taking on 170 after commission is deducted, but the real deal was with our dealer, Henry, at £210, though I still believe it was cheap at that. Coming up, the boys are fighting over Jane. They like to have a day out with the Duke. <laughs> what about me? But who will yeah. win the day? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Things are well underway in the dealer's den, and Debbie's got an item that's been in hibernation for a while. Tell me a little bit about this um, item that you brought in today. Well, I found, I found it in a house we, we bought in 1959 um, at the back of a cupboard when I was cleaning it. And um, ever since then, it's been left in um, a glass cab cabinet. Well, what you've got here is a little tortoiseshell purse. And I would say that it dates to about 1880, certainly in late 19th century. Um, and it's been inlaid here, I think, probably with a gold inlay, very fine work. But we can, we can undo the clasp. Um, and inside, you've got this silk interior. Which is, um, you can see it hasn't really seen the light of day oh, no, or it no, would have no, um, faded right. horribly, that's, that's wouldn't right. it? Yes. And in the centre of the purse here, you've got another little compartment which you can open up and it, it, it just gives you a, a, a little secure yeah. compartment within it. My, I have one small reservation about it and that is that the tortoiseshell is damaged. and and. The damage, again, uh, is here, which is the area that I would expect it to be damaged mm. if it had been used. If you use it and you drop it, tortoiseshell is not a forgiving thing. No. Um, I am going to make you an offer, yes. um, but it will be realistic, in my opinion, because of the damage factor. Yes. Um, so, 
20, 40, 60 pounds. Oh, I thought it was worth more than that. A lot more than that. Well, yeah. Um, well, I tell you what, I'll go one more, but it's, it's going to be a colour that you might not particularly like. Mm -hmm. 65 and I'm out. It gives me a little bit of a profit, but I've also got to sort out the damage. Um, and, you know, you've got to go away with something you're happy with, and I'm, I'm not going to force you to no. sell it to me. You do know that. Yes, I do. So you do have the option of going to yeah. auction. No, I wonder that. You sure? So you I'll happy? Take that. Yes. You're happy yes. with that? We've got a deal? Yes. Thanks, Mavis. Thank it's you. A lovely thing. Thank, Thank you. you. The tortoise won the race, and Mavis has ambled home with a nice little profit. Let's cartwheel over to Tim's table now, where the circus is in town. Hello, Jane. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Now, you've bought a clown here yes. today. What's he called? I didn't give him a name as a child. You didn't give him a name as a child? No. Why? I don't know. I just did it. I just called him a clown. And did you like him as a child? Yes, I loved him. This is a clockwork clown? Yes, yes. And do you want to demonstrate? Yes, yes. Now, looking at him, Jane, I don't think you've played with him a lot, have you? Not a lot, not no. a lot. And who bought it for you? My grandfather. Right. So you're not a bit sentimental about it? Well, I am, but, you know, it's sort of just been in the cupboard now, and yeah. so, um, really, I don't mind. So, do you know anything about it, where it came from? That, I think that's Spanish, I'm not too it sure. It is, because it says here, yeah, yeah. Rico, yeah. Espanol. Um, nice that it's got its original box, and yes. you have really looked yes. after it. Oh, yes. You have. Oh, I can't yes. believe you haven't christened yes. him. We'll have to no. christen him. Yes, I will. Before, before. Before he goes. Value. Have you got any idea? Well, I've got you a, have. a few <laughs> ideas in my head, but I'm leaving that to you. What about... Get some money out. £20. No, 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 no. What about thirty pounds? No, oh, I think that's quite. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I, I, I think no, no, no. He, he, he works very hard, and I think he's worth a little I bit more. I work very hard. <laughs> no, I think he, he's worth a little bit more. If I take this away and. Replace it with that forty pounds. No, no, I think it's worth a bit more. <laughs> right, this is it now. What? Forty-five pounds. Uh, is that your final? Well, there's a bit of damage. Please. Oh, I thought they were just spares. No, no, oh, they're not. Oh, they're not, love it, oh. honestly. Tim is normally very generous. He's got how much on the table? Forty-five. I'm still generous there. If you fancy coming down to London to the auction, we can oh, still yeah. do that. Yeah, I'll have a day out. You see? They like to have a day out with the Duke. What about me? Never mind him, <laughs> he might want to just <laughs> he might want to put more money in a minute, you oh, see. Oh, see, I've so, play him. So you can play him yeah. like this, you know, like yeah. a salmon I'll on a reel rod. Him in. If you can get more money off him, do so. If not, you and I we'll hey, have a day trip to London. See you at the auction. Well, Jane, I'm not going to put any more money in okay. because you need this day trip to London with David, I don't do, you? I do, really? I do, yeah. I really do. You're going to have a laugh at that. I auction. will, I will. So it's been lovely to meet and you. you. And, and you, and uh, you. Good luck at the art. Thank you very much. After all that clowning about, Jane's decided to go to auction. Let's see how she gets on. The estimate is 30 to 50 pounds, the reserve is 30, yes. which is less than you were offered in cash. Yes. Let's see how we do with the toy clown. It's in lovely condition. Lot 90 is a Spanish clockwork toy clown. Lot 90 it is, and where should we go? Where should we start this? Maybe 20 pounds to start me? 10 pounds to start me. 10 and bid, thank you. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 22 pounds I'm bid. 
25, 25. Crawling along. Uh, I hope it doesn't sell now at that price. Okay, it didn't sell. It got up to 25 and the reserve was 30. Perhaps. I won't be disappointed. Perhaps the news is you're not disappointed. No. It was never going to sell. All you really wanted was a day yeah. out with the Duke. Exactly. And you're still taking <laughs> the clown home, so that's a cracking deal. That's the real deal. Now Mark has shown up with some decorative brass. I wonder if Corrie has an inkling as to how much it might be worth. And you've brought along a very interesting little inkwell. And how did you come by the inkwell? It belonged to my granddad and uh, he died. So we cleaned the house out and obviously got bits and pieces, sentimental. I took them away, but things today, things be sold. Did he ever use it? Not to my knowledge, no. But even in those days, it was mm. obsolete, wasn't it? Yeah. Bit of a useless item. I think in it's got a bit of age way. to it, yeah. I would say yes, looking at it. We have a look at it. There's a lovely lady's head here, and she's got sort of feathers in her hair. And it sweeps down to a dish in which you would have kept bits and pieces, pins, paper clips, that sort of thing. And inside, we lift it up, there's a porcelain liner for the ink. So that's the ink well. We close it down. In date, 1890 to 1910. So that would fit in with it being your grandfather's, wouldn't it? Yep. And I think it's probably French. Just looking at the quality and the design, and especially the lady's face, very usual French um, motif that you would have seen on, on it's brass, solid brass, and, and it's a nice thing. But what's against it is it's brass. And brass is not popular at the moment. So I'm gonna put some money on the table. In a bit, 20? 40. How do you feel about that? Um, obviously, I watch the shows. Yeah. I know a little bit. <laughs> it might not be today's market, but I know it's got a little bit of sentimental value to it. But to me, I've got to think of what I'm going to get for it. Mm -hmm. So, being a bit of a businesswoman, I'm going to put another 10 down, 50 on the table, and that is my offer. That's your oh. final offer. That is my final offer, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I think we have a deal. We have a deal. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much indeed for bringing yeah. it along. Thank you. Coming up, Paula knows what she wants. You got any idea? Well, I know what I'd like, but whether it's the same... Well, I know what I'd like, <laughs> but... do they want the same thing? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. And Henry's hoping Ivan won't be too terrible to do business with. Um, so what have you brought along to show me today, just, then? Just uh, a little lot of uh, jewellery that's... Some of it has come down through the family from the mother. Yeah. But this little item here, yeah. a little watch chain, um, I bought some stuff at an auction and uh, there was a little box in there and I sort of rummaged through the little box and that was in the bottom of the box. It was absolutely filthy and uh, <laughs> it was kind of a freebie, really. What a wonderful story. That never happens to me. I never <laughs> have that luck at all. And then this little pin brooch and the ring and the pin, the other pin, they were my mother's. OK. Why are you deciding to get rid of them at this point? Well, it's like all of this. As we get old, we have to retire, and my pension isn't doing very well, right. so I need some more cash. What we've got here, we've got what's called a watch Albert. Yeah. OK. Um, and that's actually um, nine carat gold, mm -hmm. but really we're going to be looking at what that weighs in its yeah. gold weight for uh -huh. its value. Mm -hmm. Likewise, we've got this little pearl bar brooch yeah. there that as sweet as it is, mm -hmm. people just don't no. wear them. No. My two favourite pieces mm -hmm. that we've got yeah. are definitely the ring and the stick pin. Oh, right. So yeah. if we start yeah. with the ring, uh -huh. now this is an 18 karat gold ring yeah. and we've got three pearls in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unfortunately, the pearls are discoloured and damaged, yeah. Yeah. which means that we're going to have to have them replaced. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the stick pin, which is my favourite piece oh, right, out of all of it. That's I love been it. one of my favourite pieces What too. we've got here is we've got 
a little nine carat gold stick pin yeah. set with two little opals here mm -hmm. and a sapphire. Yeah. Okay, but the sapphire is quite likely mm -hmm. to be simulated uh -huh. okay, because it's only set in nine carat. Yeah. But I think it's really lovely. I just love it. It's mm -hmm. this little three leaf clover yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just wonderful mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. Question is, mm -hmm. how much are we going to pay for them? That's that is the, the question. 20. No way. We'll do a little bit better than that. No maybe. way. 40. Oh, you're going to have to go a lot further than that. 60. Even further. 80. 100. Not okay. close enough. 120. 140. No, you, you, you're getting warm. You're just touching, your toes are just in the water. 180. 180. 200. How does that seem? It looks very, very nice, very tempting. But I feel we could get a little bit more from you. OK, so yeah. I'm at 200. Yeah. You want a little bit more? A little bit more, yes. A little bit more, yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's go another 20. And then... 30, and I think that for me is going to be about as much as I'm going to go brown ones and put another one of these on there. Okay, I'll go along with that. Yeah, I'll go along with that. So we'll take that one that away. One away, and we'll put that one down there. Yeah, how does that seem to you? That looks good to me. We have a deal. We have a deal. Ivan, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very thank much. Deal should top up the old pension, Ivan. But back on Corrie's table, hopeful seller Sam isn't sticking to his script. Hi, Sam. I'm oh, Corrie. I'm pleased to meet you. And I'm your dealer today. And I believe you are a great fan of Roy Hudd. Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah, come on, you tell me about it. Why do you like him so yeah, much? Yeah, well, I, I like his style of comedy. Yeah. And I wrote to him for a same photograph. Yeah. And then he's with the photograph. He sent me a, a letter saying about his, he runs charity auctions to raise funds for uh, Old Town Music Hall. So these are what you bought at the auction, at yeah. the charity auction. Yes. And let's have a look. See, it says the news headlines starring Roy Hudd, June Whitfield, and Chris, Chris Emmett. Chris Emmett. Yes. So what this is is a script for that show. It's the actual script for the for the program. So yes. we've got the script signed by the three stars. Yes. And when we open it... It's got all the changes to the script. These are all the changes made by Roy yes. Hudge, who wrote the script. Yes. So it's annotated in his own hand. Yeah, they might even have done this during making the show. So yes. it's a sort of view into how the show was made, Yes, really. and that, that goes all the way through the script. And this is the tape of the show. Uh, yes, that's the uh, tapes of the actual programmes. Signed again by the, the three. Signed again, yes. So, how long ago did you buy these? Uh, five, six years ago. And why have you brought them along to sell them? Uh, well, uh, not my really my sort of thing. But I've enjoyed them for five or six years. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm concentrating on uh, autographs. You sound like a man who's got a huge collection. Yes, I've got nearly 400. And so the money that I give you, are you going to use to buy more autographs? Probably, yes. Oh, yes. so it's like an ever-ending search. Yes, yes. Now, to me, I'm not sure of the value of this, of no. these. It's something that I'm just going to have a little stab at. Yes. And it's probably going to be really low, and you're probably going to be really angry with me, but it's the best I can do. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put 10 on the table. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't entertain that, no. no not, not for the work that's gone into this. I, I can see the work that's gone in it, but I'm very unsure of the market. So, it's 15 on the table, and I'm afraid that is my final offer. Well, well going by what I've seen about scripts, uh, it should be valued between... Don't tell me. You're not to tell me how much it's valued at. You mean valued Estimate. a bit more? Estimate. I'm a bit low, am I? Yes. I'm, am I very far below? Well, a bit. you're a little bit under. A bit under. A little bit under. Okay, if, if I need... gamble another fiver, I'm going to take away five and put down ten. Yes, well, that, that, is oh, a fair, two tens. that is a fair price. Is that a fair price? That is a fair price. Shall I gamble the £20? Yes. Would you accept my gamble? If that's your final offer, yes. That is my final offer. Oh, well, I, th I think we'll deal on that. We've got a deal yes. on that, have we? Yes. We've got a deal. Thank you very, very much, much, Sam. Surprise, Sam didn't want your autograph, Corey. 
Hi, Paula. Over to Tim, Hi, where Tim. Paula's making a cameo appearance. Now, you've brought along a Victorian cameo brooch today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how you acquired it? Yeah, it was a gift from a friend. I was working out in the Middle East. He bought it in England, but it was... I was going to say, <laughs> this is quite unusual for it to be in the Middle East. No, no, it was uh, about 35 years ago. So you've had it quite a long time. I have. Did you used to wear it? I've never worn it. No. Why have you never worn it? It's not really my style. I don't wear anything round my neck to pin it to. I see. Um, so do you, do, you, do you find it a bit old-fashioned? I appreciate it for what it is, but it's not me. It's not <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very diplomatic. So it's about 1860 in date, so oh, wow. mid-Victorian. Yeah. The, the mount is not gold. It's a metal okay. called Pinchbeck. Yeah. Um, she's quite nicely carved, classical scene. Probably from Greek or Roman, you know, mythology. Yeah. Um, I've had a look at her. She's got no cracks, which is always important in a cameo because once you get a crack in it, really, they, they lose the value. Yeah. And the key to a good cameo, really, is the more detail on it, the better. You know, the better quality, wow. the more yeah. definition in the face. Mm -hmm. And she's quite, she's quite well done. So value. Yes. You've got any idea? Well, I know what I'd like, but whether it's the same... Well, I know what I'd like, but... <laughs> <laughs> £50. It's a good start. Well, I think that's a very good start, Paula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> £70. Oh, no, I thought you were going to put... No, two. no, I wasn't being too generous. <laughs> It will only be a little bit. Eighty pounds. Um, another five. This is just for cheek, really. <laughs> I'm giving you this other five. But... Well, I've got the full set now. You have. You've got the matching set there. Have we got a deal? We do, certainly have. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And you're not going to miss it, really, are you, Paula? Not at all. <laughs> you, you did it because you don't like it. No. <laughs> Next, Debbie's up against her youngest vendor yet. How much more do you think would be fair? 150 more. His age won't stop him from driving a hard bargain. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. For the last deal of the day, Debbie's up against Alan and his grandson Ashley. Not to mention Winston Churchill. Right. Alan, come today with some four rather nice coins. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about them, Alan? Well, my father bought them in the early 60s as an investment. So they become your inheritance? Yes. So we think that they're a commemorative set um, made to celebrate uh, this incredibly famous British man. We also know that they're 18 carat. Yes. Okay. yes. So yes. they're worth a wee bit more than nine carat. They do appear to be in very nice condition. I mean, they've clearly been in the box probably all their life. They're not something that someone would have out jangling around in a pocket. Mm. So, you know, they, they are of interest. They're certainly of interest to um, coin collectors. But my my offer to you will be. will be just based on the weight and the value at the moment of, of that particular carat of gold. And have you got any say in this inheritance, Ashley, do you think? I just kind of was in it for the money. <laughs> Good <laughs> answer. I just coming home for the money. <laughs> That's exactly I, what um, my son would have said. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so shall I put some money on the yes, table? Please. Are you going to do the counting? <laughs> uh, not good at maths. You're not? Oh, well, that's great. I so, so if I just put that on there, so that's a hundred. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get my How's hands the on those. Two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. <laughs> it's whole numbers. Three. Four. Yes. Five. Bit more in 
Six. Eight counting now, Ash. Yep. Eight. How, how does that look? Um, no, it doesn't no. look very good at the moment. No. So, well, I'm going to have to go over the other side of the table. I'm, I'm afraid so. That's nine. No. No. You can no. You can put a bit more down there. Do you think? Yes, yeah. please, yes. We talk to you nicely to keep going. You, you're being very nice, yes, but then I am handing out large mm -hmm. amounts of cash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, We've now got £1,000 on the table. I think you can go a bit more. So, how much more do you think would be fair for me to put down? Mm -hmm. hey, um, actually, so, oh, just say. 150 more. How about we meet? And I give you another fifty pounds. I, th I think I think if you put another one, we might we might be very near. If you put another fifty down. If I put another fifty down, do we have a deal? We, we actually, I did say to him, anything over eleven hundred pound could be ease. Easy, easy That's why I'm thinking. Yeah. That is so, so unfair. So I, <laughs> I agree with that so much. That is so unfair, Granddad. So so That's why I said 100. I'm not surprised. <laughs> why didn't you say 300? <laughs> if I put another 50 down, guys, are you going to agree? I'll, I'll agree for the 1100, and then you then deal with it. <laughs> That's just, then, then you're pulling on my heartstrings. If, if it was the other way around, I'd be quite happy to say that's it. Because it would be granddad I, in I the think loss. if you put a 50 down there... Yes. ..and give him £20 for coming, you know... £20? £20? Pound. 20 pound. Oh, what? <laughs> mm. there's, there's the 50. Now, there's I'm happy 50. with 1100 for my... Because so granddad's happy. Mm. How about... Mm -hmm. How about... Ten. And that is me out. You've got to give me a bit then. I oh, think it, that. It, I, I agree. We'll, we'll shake. I agree with that side. We're not shaking on the deal is yet. He's shaking right. Granddad owes you at least one of those. For, I, I how agree. many hours have you put into this? Right. <laughs> Look at me. Like so, um, that. Am I? Uh, is that a deal? I believe that could be. A deal. Okay. <laughs> Well, Thank definitely the fifty pound for me. No, <laughs> yes. Really? No, we're talking yes. later. We're, yes. No, no it, we're he's later. said it on national television. Give yes. me, a, give no, me a we're shake. Talk yes, we're talking later. National television. No, we're talking fifty. Later. Come on, come on. We got a deal. We got a deal. A hard-fought <laughs> deal for Debbie, and I'm sure Alan will look after <laughs> Ashley too. <laughs> now let's see how our other dealers got on with their purchases. We've got this little pearl bar brooch there that, as sweet as it is, people just don't wear them. Henry sold all but one item of the gold jewellery collection for £230. So, have we got a deal there then, Andrea? I think so, yes. Yes, Brilliant. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tim offloaded the paper turner for £85 and the cameo brooch for £100. Look at it. And our quarry, well, swings and roundabouts. This is amazing. Funny enough, the colour is what I find very attractive. She sold the Galet scent bottle for £450, but only sold the inkwell for a mere 35 But it's Debbie who's our dealer of the day. She sold the coins for a whopping £1,350. Well done, Debbie. We've had a great day here in Leighton Buzzer. There's been lots of action, just the way we like it. Lots of buying, lots of selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.